What's going on guys? We are going to replace the starter in this video and I actually have two problems with the bike currently and they're the only two problems that I found with the bike. First one is the starter. Uh, it started to act funny on me when I was at the track. And uh, it was acting funny for the previous owner too. He put a new battery in it thinking the battery was bad. Uh, but as you see in the video there, it, it just, the battery cranks weak or seems like the battery cranks weak. It's actually the starter that's that's got, um, it's drawing too much amperage and it, it really strains the battery. Now I tested this by hooking up another brand new battery and it did the same exact thing i took a battery and a jump pack now i don't have the world's most powerful jump pack but with a good fresh charge battery and a jump pack it should at least make this thing turn over a lot nicer than it was and it doesn't do it all the time so i'm sure there's certain dead spots in the starter itself but we're putting a new starter in it and then we're just gonna ride around and see if it fixes the problem. That's the first problem, and that's what pretty much we're gonna be doing in this video. And we're gonna fix the other issue I found with the bike. If you look here, the chain or front sprocket cover, as you can see, it's broken. I don't even know if the previous owner knew about that. Maybe, maybe they did. But a new cover, it's only like 30 bucks so I just went ahead and bought a new uh, sprocket cover so we're gonna toss that on as well that's what we're gonna get done in this video today all right now I just did a quick Google search and there's two ways to replace the starter I'm gonna go with what they say is the easier way you got to remove more stuff but they say it's it's quicker and easier to do it this way and we're gonna start by removing the seat just bolts here under the seat. One there, and then another one on that side. Seat off. And then we gotta remove these side panels, remove the gas tank, and then we'll kind of talk about what we gotta remove once we get the gas tank off. All right, we removed the gas tank. And one thing that I forgot to mention before you uh, start working on stuff like this, since we're working on electronic stuff, you know, mainly the starter, obviously electronic, you want to disconnect the battery, at least the negative cable, get it out of the way. And then if you have multiple things hooked up to your battery, just grab a zip tie, keep all that stuff together so that way you don't miss something. Especially on this bike because it has a power commander. If you don't reattach the negative wire, you'll be fighting yourself for a while to try and get the bike to start again. So anything you take off the battery at that time, just zip tie it all together or tape it. Whatever you got to do to secure all those cables together, that way you don't lose them. But even with the gas tank off, you still can't see the starter. It's right down in there somewhere. You're just gonna have to trust me on that. So the next thing we're going to remove is going to be all of this nonsense here. The throttle body, everything, all this stuff here is all pretty much attached to the throttle body. So we're gonna take the air box off and then we're going to access the throttle bodies. We're gonna remove them. And then I believe that's gonna give us enough room. I don't think we have to take the throttle bodies completely off the bike, but I think we have to move them out of the way enough just so we can get access to the bolts that secure the starter. Ball and Allens are your friend for this job here. <clears throat> so what I did is, I didn't want to waste too much of the battery on the uh, time lapse. And I'll just show you guys. So you got to loosen these four 
clamping screws here. Now three of them you can get from the left side of the bike. You do have to remove a couple of pieces off of your fairings and at least loosen your fairings so that way you can snake <coughs> your ball end Allen through. And when you successfully get it in there, you can get it right on your right on the Allen there and you get your access to loosen those bolts. And once all four of those clamps are loose, uh, I pulled out the ECU. There's three bolts in here that held the ECU in. So I just pulled that out there, unhooked my throttle cables. And then I was able to lift the throttle bodies up as a set. I disconnected the coolant lines that went from the back of the cylinder head here. There's a coolant line that runs up to the fast idle circuit on the throttle body here. So it runs to this guy right here. And then I just plugged up the lines. So that way I could take my throttle bodies and fold them backwards like this. I also removed the idle screw from its holder. And now I have still very limited access to the starter. You still really can't see it. Starter's actually this guy right here. So the starter is the bolt for the power wire for the starter is right here. And then the bolts to undo it are down in there. You can kind of see them. So you can get access to those two bolts. And I'm hoping that I can sneak this thing out without having to remove this insulator completely. So I'm probably going to take these boots all off here. I'll clean them up. And then... I will lift up that rubber flap as much as I can and hopefully I can snake the starter out this way and kind of work its way out there. So we'll see. All right, we might make a little sparks, but we're just going to show you, well, I'm going to show you what's going on with the starter. So starter off the bike, no load from the bike, trying to turn the engine over. I'm just going to hook up my positive here. And I'm going to turn on my, see if I can't electrocute myself tonight. So positives hooked up. I'm going to turn on my jump pack here. Then we're going to just put negative power to it and just listen to how labored the starter is. Doing a little bit of welding. So you hear how it just kind of dies? I mean, it spins okay, but it just dies down, draws a lot of amperage. And that's what I was hearing when I was on the bike. So here we take the new starter. And I'll go up our positive and our negative. So definitely the starter was the issue. So instead of throwing another battery at the bike, only to come to the same conclusion that I needed to replace the starter, I just went right for it. And honestly, I took a guess on this, guys, but I, it was a pretty educated guess because, like I said, did testing with the battery. I hooked this jump pack up to the battery, to a new battery, and it still performed the same way. So junk starter out, new starter, about to go in. Uh, one thing I do have to do is I have to upsize the uh, the battery cable because the old one was a five millimeter bolt here and the new one is actually a six millimeter bolt. So I just have to upsize the the starter cable and then we can button this thing back up and get this thing done. So I'm just going to put this out there. This is a pain, but this is the easier way to do this. I've heard people taking out the thermostat and they kind of get in there that way. But taking the throttle bodies off, I have 
great access to where the bolts are on the starter. It's right down there. I can just get to everything I need to, and then I just got to kind of wiggle the starter in. So I'm going to kind of put it in there, and I'm just going to angle it in and push it into the engine. And first I'm going to upsize this is the bolt I'm talking about here, this cable. Just need to pull this cable out here. So that's my starter cable there. Just need to make this hole slightly larger and then we'll be ready to rock and roll. Alrighty, new starter is in and that was an absolute nightmare. Word of the wise, if your R1 needs a starter, sell it. No, I was just kidding. It was a royal pain in the butt to get that starter on there. But the new end, I drilled it out, and the bolt, everything fit nice, snugly. This is just a quarter inch drill bit. We'll size that up nicely, and I think that'll give it a nice, it'll give it a better connection too, so I don't think this starter's going to fail as I wouldn't say quickly as this one did. I mean, 20,000 miles before the starter failed. It's, that's not terrible. But, if you look through here, so that's the back side of the starter right in there. Now, what I found I had to do is I had to take my ratchet here, and I just fished it through there. And just on the starter itself in there, you can't really see it. On the starter itself there, I just kind of tapped it in. I think that O-ring that's on there is definitely a lot snugger than the one that was that was on the old starter. And it just needed a little bit of a bump to get it to go in. Now, I wish I would have done that before I ended up taking off the stator cover and everything and making sure that everything fit properly in here. But... Now, mistakes were made. Now I have to button this all back up. I'm gonna have to order a gasket for that. But for the time being, we're just gonna repair the gasket that was on there, and it should be good enough to uh, prove the theory, start the bike up, make sure everything's working, and then uh, in the meantime, I'll just order the gasket, and it doesn't take much to put the new gasket on there. So just got to make sure that the starter is going to work. So I'm going to repair the old gasket and I'm going to reassemble the bike and we're going to make sure that this thing starts up. All right, don't be like me. Uh, there's no need to take this setup off at all. I did it. I screwed up and I'm still working on the bike. I have the top end buttoned up. All that stuff's ready to go. That, that went easy peasy. What happened is I went to put the stator back on, which I have to get a new stator gasket for it anyway. But for the sake of getting it together, going to ride it, make sure everything works, I'm just going to put it together now with some liquid gasket and it's going to have to do. But when I went to assemble it, the back of the rotor where the starter clutch mounts to, there's these little rubber cush drives. Really dumb setup, actually. And this cush drive, as soon as I went to put the cover on, the rotor pulled out toward the stator, and it pulled away from this enough that this little rubber cush drive fell down to the bottom of the engine, so I had to remove the oil pan. So yes, let me just restate that. Just give it a little bit of a tap on the starter and that should knock it past that O-ring and you should be good to go. <sighs> this has just uh, not been fun, not at all. One thing to note, if you do lose that and you have to take the oil pan off, the exhaust does come off in multiple sections and yeah, that was helpful. So, I'm gonna button this up. Hopefully I can get this thing to at least turn over and start and uh, you know prove a point that it will start and run. But let's see, uh, if I get too tired, I'm just gonna call it a night and then come back here next night. But that's where we're at so far.
Not so good. Alrighty. Oil's back in it. Let's see how much better it sounds. sounds so much better. One more for good measure. two later since filming that video it was about three o'clock in the morning when i got done filming that video i didn't even realize i didn't film an outro so here it is it's the bike runs it starts it's great that gasket actually does not leak at all i am putting a new gasket in it and now that it's been so long i do have a new gasket for it but in addition to the starter install Ta-da! I got the nice new sprocket cover installed. That was pretty simple and straightforward. I just had to remove the foot peg. So the mount for the foot peg and then just the shifter and I slid all that back and I was able to access that sprocket cover. And I think the reason it was broken before is they probably didn't want to remove all that stuff just to gain access to it. And probably breaking it and putting zip ties on there was an easier solution is my guess i'm i'm not i don't know for sure but that's my guess as to why that was broken <clears throat> but it was real simple real easy to install not a big deal but i have had a chance to ride the bike and the bike seems ready to rock and roll i didn't see any big issues with it uh no leaks thus far and uh which is good because i have some videos lined up that i want to do on this bike now that it is together a couple comparison videos and just some r1 content in general if there's anything you'd like to see as always guys drop a comment below uh, i'll try and get a video out to you guys on this bike for any requests you have but uh if not i'm just going to do my own thing and if you like it great leave a thumbs up uh and hey if you made it this far in the video, might as well smash that subscribe button if you aren't already subscribed. But that's going to do it for this one, guys. I'm Matt. This is MotoWorks. We'll see you in the next video.